Okay, so um, yeah, the great overview of Notepad Plus Plus. I can see how, again, just to me, because it's more complex to set up, I would, I'm surprised it's as popular as it is. It's not that it's a bad editor, it's just site for auto hockey is so much easier to set up. Um, but anyway, that comes in as the same thing that we were talking about before about uh, Visual Basic or something like that. That for for somebody who has been using uh, something very convenient for a long time, if you tell them to go back in time to use something older, they might not want it. And that's what happens with Notepad Plus Plus. At that time, that was the best that was there. It it, it really was like killing Notepad. That's what it was doing, right? So right. it had a lot of features. Of course, you have to set it up and so on, but that was the only thing you had. Now you have site for Auto Hotkey that you open it and you can code. You have uh, Auto Hotkey Studio that is just set up for Auto Hotkey. You go ahead and see other editors that had a, lot, a ton of bells and whistles, and they're easy to just open it and work. If I tell you now, go ahead and set up Notepad Plus Plus, you're going to be like, nah, 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 no, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. Jesus is showing us something. I don't know what. Send it looks like is, are, that's no, part of the... Awesome. No, so, so you are talking, it's so, I'm sorry. This looks like the code on the, on the other, I'm not sure, yeah, so. This looks like the code right about here. So mm -hmm. he's talking about this part here. Now, yes, um, he, he might be a little bit confused of what I'm doing here, um, but no, that's not the part of the code that actually copies the code. That is part of a code that I use for um, kind of making a decision. I have to figure out whether the caret is in the middle of the word, at the end of the word, or the beginning of the word. So my solution to that was, wherever you are, I just, Shift left a little bit, copy and see what is in there. I want to see if it is an, uh, a space, a blank line or a letter. If it is a letter, I would assume that there's a word to the left. If there is a word to the left, I'm gonna do something there. So if there are no words to the left, if there's no part, if I'm not at the beginning of it, then I would do something very specific. So that's what decides whether I just move the caret to the beginning of the word, or I just go ahead, if I'm at the beginning of the word, don't move anywhere, just go ahead and select the word. Cool. Yeah, that was, I was blown away when you said the F1 is not a, a thing in Notepad++, which... <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, I can't F1 imagine. Notepad plus plus gives you the, the help for Notepad plus plus. That's what it does. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine learning auto hockey without having that help file hand, super handy. Right? But like, then again, now here's the deal. So, so in your editors like this one, if you put message box, it would just give you some kind of like information. And even this one is very bad because, for example, if you have, if you have uh, another language like C plus plus or something like that, uh, if you use, uh, let's go ahead and use C++, um, uh, there is kind of like, no, that's not what I want. Um, let me see, SCD, no. Yeah, for example, oh, it's not yet, oh, I don't have the, the suggestions installed. So I, whenever you have the language, so if you have, if you have the, um, if you have a the the IntelliSense, right. it it gives you the current um, function, but not as text that you would have to delete, but as kind of like a pop up that gives you yeah. a lot of information. The way right? does it. Yeah, right, exactly. So that's what is called IntelliSense, right? right? And and a lot of other editors have that, but in Notepad plus plus you have to enable that, and you have to actually create the file for it which is kind of like a lot of work and- um, Can you switch back to Notepad++? Because the other yes. one, which I didn't look at, but I'm guessing it doesn't, is uh, does it show you inside a function which parameter you're on? 
No, no, right now, no, because we're using a um, a user defined language. Yeah. And the user defined languages are very, um, very limited. So, so even, even if you try to use message box, it just, for example, just. Oh, well, it's it. Set. We'll try it with so, like so, Stir Split or Regex. I'm so Stir Split with a function. No, no, it, it will not do it because right now the only thing that you have is autocomplete. Now, yeah. So, so here's the deal. It's not that you can't because Notepad or well, the Scintilla component allows you to do that. That's the reason why HK Studio can do it because the Scintilla component allows you to do it. Now that's a lot of work. You have to actually put right. it and the work has been done for other languages, not for AutoHotKey. That's the one thing. So, yeah. Yeah. But again, the point is, if you're going to be starting out and learning auto hotkey using notepad plus plus that's where well that 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 was notepad plus plus was a good um option at in, in its time and it was a popular option but i think now right now there are better options around like yeah oh i know i'm just saying that but that's what i'm talking about now if you're starting out now no no uh, if you're starting out now then minimum yeah. the minimum you should do is cipher on yeah minimum. Then, and it has its issues just because of how the commas use an auto hotkey in you know between functions and and commands, but um, it, it's okay. It, it's still it, it helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I am very spoiled. Thank you. Maybe add some code to put back in the cursor at the original position. Maybe. Um, well, we we which actually did you have it in there that we yeah where we are restoring the clipboard, but um. Yeah. So 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 now the question is the following in that case. So if I have the cursor at that location, the only thing is that I'm interested in the word that is there. So if you hit F12 there, it should grab clip weight, right? Now after that, you want to have you're worried about that. Now you close that. Now you want to have the position of the cursor at the end of the word, the beginning word. So or where it was before, I'm not sure what- I think that's what he's that. saying is, yeah, try to keep that original position, hmm. which would be pretty tricky. Considering, again, because we know we could solve this for a given editor, but we're trying to create a tool that is independent for across different editors. The, and that's where that would be- The pretty main cool. issue with that code is that you would have to count how many letters you have to that site, also how many letters there are to that site. Because going this way and copying in it, I lost the information of where I was. Unless right. I count, well, I cannot count how many times I moved, unless I go letter by letter until I find an empty space. But that would make it complicated because one of the things that we wanted to do is like select part of the word like this and do a search just on the part of the word that was selected. Um, that would make it almost impossible to do that because then I would have to kind of like, I'm not sure how to explain it, but the position, the current caret, I know the X and Y positions on the screen, but I don't know how many letters of from the beginning of the word I am, right? So it but might be a little bit tricky. won't even uh, tell you the actual position of the cursor anyway, so. Right now, now for example, the editor itself might do that. So, for for example, here I know that I'm in 19.9. So, nine, line 19, column nine, that is the position of my cursor. So, I could just, if I am in a, in a specific editor, I could grab that. Like, I could grab it via uh, commands that it has, and and I can do whatever I was going to do, and then send the caret to that position again. I could do that. But not every place, not every editor might do that. So, so, so I have a, a general question since I think we're kind of happy with the questions we've had so far. No one has, has more questions, and I hear this a lot. And I just still, I, I'd like to better understanding it. So, you know, earlier you mentioned both Notepad plus plus and Site for Autohotkey are Scintilla controls, right? They're yeah, they are using the Scintilla component, right? Component. So help me just get a better understanding of what that actually means. It's just a DLL. A DLL oh, okay. it has a, a bunch of functions. One but, of the functions, one of the functions is to display a box in which you can type. But the main idea behind it is that 
you have a lot of functions that send messages to that component. That's it. So uh, it's just a DLL file. And actually, I remember tinkering with it a long, long time ago. And here you might see the scintilla wrapper. And if you want the scintilla wrapper to work, you would, um, oh, oh yeah, here. So you would have to have the Lexer, this DLL file, that is the one that has all the functions of the scintilla control. But that, that is a custom Lexer that I created. That was, it is a custom Lexer for auto hotkey. So it was, see if you go and download the scintilla component, from their page, they don't have anything for auto hotkey. Okay. But a long time ago, I created a C++ project for the Lexer for auto hotkey. And I had to play with this code for a long time to get the, the Lexer for auto hotkey working. It was a pain, but this is exactly a Lexer, a, a real Lexer, how you code a Lexer in C++. Or auto hotkey. And the and Lexer is like the IntelliSense, right? The colors? It is the, it's the colors. It's just the colors. It's not the IntelliSense. Now, I did that. Now, the, the one thing that I have to do now, here's the thing. This Lexer, I have to send it to the guy who created Scintilla so that he could merge it into the Scintilla component. And that way, no plus plus could have it. Because that was my goal. I wanted to have auto hotkey on no plus plus. But by the time I finished it, by the time it was done, they already had a different new way of creating modules with uh, lexers. So I would have to trap yeah. all that and restart it again. So I decided like, yeah, it's good. It, it, I use it for what I needed as well, which was the, um, the tool that I created, right? So I needed auto hotkey syntax highlighting for my tool and that lexer does that. So I'm happy with it. And then in Site for Auto Hotkey, and well, just in Site in general, sorry, um, it uses like Lua, which is a, a, another programming language, right, for doing some things, correct? Yes. You know? Yeah. Now, does Notepad plus plus do that, or is that completely independent? No, it's just no, something. No. This is independent. This okay. um, Notepad plus plus is written in C plus plus actually. Okay. So uh, they they don't use Lua. Uh, okay. As far as I understand. So basically, yeah, the, the, the concept of the Lexer is just a library of functions that decide what color they're going to put a specific letter, depending on the context, right? And that Lexer is independent of the component, the scintilla component, okay? Yep. And, that, and, and that's the reason why you can have like a Lexer for one language, but you don't have it for another because they're independent and they work completely independent from each other. Now, the Cintilla component has those flexors already included in their main file. And when you, whenever you use the Cintilla component, you have access to all those flexors automatically. That's what happens. Cool. All right, anybody have, now maybe we're done with Notepad++. Um, does anyone have any other questions about Notepad++? And if not, do they have any other code they want to demonstrate or need help on or? Um, you know, we're always here to happy to help. I have some code. Okay, Dimitri. Um, why don't you go yeah, ahead and it. yeah, let's see it. Uh, okay, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have some code, and I think maybe some of you will have written some sim something similar. I needed to scan some documents on certain strings. And I'll display my, share my screen. Let's see. Here. God. I've no, I'm just working on it. So it's, it's work in progress. And actually what he does is uh, scanning. Are you sharing your screen? We're, we're not seeing. Um, there we go. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. I'm scanning, actually scanning a folder on documents uh, of Word. And I'm trying to search in all the documents uh, how much time certain strings are 
uh, in China. For okay. example, if I uh, this is the the second string that I search. Now you see the letter M is found eight times in that document and nine times in that document. Yes. Uh, I also have another uh, QEI that actually dissects the, the text more. It, uh, actually, the purpose of the script is uh, I had a lot of uh, documents where they describe how they want to screw uh, some screws with which uh, force is needed. Oh, okay. That's a Newton meter. And uh, we needed to collect that data. Uh, but the text is always written in, yeah, by hand. So I needed to analyze the text to, to figure out if uh, some uh, numbers are inside the text, if, uh, if uh, a description of the talk is, is present and things like that. And that was uh, the purpose of this script. Actually, I'm just working on it, so it's not at all finished. But I, I, I guess uh, a lot of you people have met the same uh, issue that you have a lot of files and you just need to scan them on certain strings. And maybe as you have some nice examples uh, that can inspire me to, to improve this. Uh, Wow, that's a very good, and I like it. Now, can can you show more or less what, not, not the whole code, but the process, um, the idea of how you're doing this? So first of all, you open the file, I assume, and then what do you do? Do you look through it? Do you, what is your Actually, process? Um, like the whole, the whole idea, how your algorithm? My idea is um, I use the WordCom to open the document. I, and I had this idea to also use that for PDFs, but I'll, I'll see if it works well. And uh, if I have the content, I will also save it on a text file. So if mm -hmm. I run the script again, it doesn't need to open Word again. So it's a okay. little, little bit faster. Yeah. Um, and I can show you some of my scripts. Um, this, for example, is uh, how he collects the, the data of, uh, he scans a document. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my function to, to collect the, the content of the, the document, but you can easily, um, that's right. here. Um, he opens it in words and he just takes all the text and then I replace some some strings that I found a little bit strange, uh, how he processes uh, tables to, to make it a little bit, bit more understandable. And right. then I write it again to a text file. So next time I would, if I would do the same, then I can just read the text file. That's my idea to improve the, the performance if you run the script again. Yes, and we'll then with the uh, regex, I actually uh, read every line of the, the text. And then I try to find certain regex strings. Now, and that's the, um, I would suggest you using the study option for regular expressions, because I see that for each line, you're going ahead and uh, performing. So if you, uh, on the first, you see where it says line 306, where you start the regular expression itself? Uh, yes. 306, right? So where, where the regular expression starts, yeah. right there, you're going to set up an option, capital S, and then put a parenthesis to the side, uh, a closing parent now. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, and let me just double check on that, that actually creates the study option for. I remember um, there was a way. Right, I just there never is a found way. a use for it. Yeah, uh, the, the use for it is whenever you're doing a loop like that. So what what the regular expression engine is going to do, at least the one from Arohaki, and, and I have to double check on this, Dimitri, because I'm, I see that you're using kind of like a custom function for the regular expression. Can you show me that function? What what what? Because it's you actually have... here, and it's right. actually so... um, a function to um, if. Uh... Mm -hmm. to, to check multiple strings inside that I actually want to have all the 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 matches 
and that's a function to extract all the um, matches and put them into an array. And why don't you do that with regular expression match? Um, because regular expression match already creates an object for you with an array. Yeah, mm -hmm. and is it content? A pseudo in... array. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you can actually select the option of object oh. and it creates an object. Right, that's for... true. That's true. Right, yeah. Yeah, you have a lot of ways to, to do right, that. Right, right. No, but that's okay. I am I'm, I'm not, I was just kind of like surprised. But in general, um, with the regular expressions, and let me go ahead and just double check on that if it is the S, the slash S. Um, yeah, so the capital S studies the pattern, that's the one. So what you do is that whenever you have a loop of something that you're gonna be using the same regular expression over and over again, when you use the study option that we just talked about, the, the capital S to the brand, the regular expression engine just caches that, um, it caches that regular expression in a way that it doesn't have to load it every time. So yeah. just imagine that you have a, a, a file that has 1,000 lines of code, then for each line, you would have to load the regular expression. With mm -hmm. the S, it doesn't have to load it. It is already loaded. So that helps out when you have, in, in, in his case, that he's opening multiple files, it seems like, and those files can have uh, you know, many lines. I would say that this is a very good place where you would use the study option. Yeah, it actually reminds me of the menus, the icons in the menus. I uh, I also use a lot of uh, uh, scripts that uh, rebuild menus a lot of times. And right. if you uh, suppress, for example, the, the line that uh, defines the icon, then right. you see that your speed will improve. A like lot. a lot, right? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly the same concept here. But at least it, it, it will help a little bit. I don't think you will notice the difference right now. But if you have a few hundred thousand lines of code, you might see the difference right away. Yeah. And with menus, you have also a function to load the picture inside your scripts. And that's one way to, to counter that, that speed loss. Right, exactly. Now, I think in general, the idea how you're going, how you are going about it is really similar to what I'm doing. Actually, we have a script that is very similar to that, Joe, which is, uh, you know, opening, it opens, scans out of hotkey scripts and tries to tell you if there's something uh, fishing going on and so on. And, and when I see your, your uh, execution of this, it's more or less what I did. It's basically the same thing. So it is good. It is, you're, you're doing a good job here. And Dimitri, maybe I maybe I misheard you. Um, I thought you s mentioned some things were handwritten. Did I misunderstand that? Yeah, handwritten. How you mean? Well, that's, 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 I, I thought so, so yes. line line D O C the line three three hundred and one. You see three hundred and one. When you yeah. say D O C, get content. Is that like from a handwritten document or from a word document? What is that? I know that's a custom function. That's actually this function. And what is, uh, it does, it's... Um, it's oh no, but that's uh, not the one. Yeah, that's not the one. No? Uh, no, so probably what Joe is talking about is like, if it is something that is written by hand and you have kind of like OCR it, is that ah, it? Ah, no, no. Oh, I, okay. I meant that uh, the Word documents are written by persons. Uh, so and, people uh, write them was, by themselves. There isn't like, any logic inside. It's just text. Uh, right, 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 right. So it's, you, you actually, um, I'm searching if I find a string. I'm searching for several possible strings that could indicate that the information is there. Um, mm -hmm. And another nice feature that I have um, is you can also open that document and uh, go to the certain line. Oh, look at that. That's, that's perfect. That's on the other side of my screen now. But yeah, but it, it actually that. jumps the cursor into that line, right? Yeah, because that's awesome. um, I was thinking it's nice to uh, scan the document and to collect the data. 
but uh, I all, always uh, first doubt my scripts and I prefer that my users yeah. uh, check it by hand. And if they notice that it always works perfect, then you can become lazy and say, uh, yeah, the script works. So let's right. trust yes. it. And even if there are errors, then we accept those errors right. because the speed win is, is, is uh, greater. No, but that's that's excellent. I, I, I really liked it. It's very good content. Um, now, the way how you're opening those Word uh, files, are you using like a com optic for it? Yes, of course. Right, exactly. Oh, uh, see, uh, I think I've written a function for it. I liked how you said uh, you were kind of as as possible saving that file as raw text so that you don't have to you know, use com to reread the Word documents every single time your query changes. An even more complex solution might be to, you know, re or remember when they were last read and, you know, update as necessary. Well, I, I'd consider throwing it in a database and then, and then having That's that. That's what I would do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Into a database. That's, that would be like the optimal solution. Like you wouldn't have that information. It saves um, a lot of space. It is the queries are, are lightning fast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, of course, time, ideal. But I don't know if all his users want to set up SQL or whatever. It, no, no, you don't have to do that. No, no, you don't have to do that. It's the script itself. It, it would have a, it would have the, the SQLite database for itself. But that's it. Okay. The, the user doesn't even know that it, there's a database in there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in my case, I um, it, I'm talking about maybe 20 documents at a time that it will, will scan. Uh, and I don't know the size of the documents and the documents will be always different, uh, but I will collect that data, which documents I need to search. Uh, um, and there's actually still one flaw in my code. Um, I also need to add the uh, creation date of the documents uh -huh. uh, together with the text to see if the document has changed, of course. Wouldn't uh, that be like the modification to... date? Well, yeah, you could. Do you have access to the modification date? Because the modification date is exactly that, if it was changed, right? Yes, indeed. I think I would just put it off in, inside the the text of the, uh, the title of the document. I think okay. that's the yeah. most when You only need the content of the actual uh, Word document. Couldn't you use um, com object get instead of actually using the Word uh, object to get the content of the file? Should be much faster than actually opening Word each time. Um, excuse me, can you repeat it, Jackie? Yeah. Com object get, which is a function that is in other hotkey and in, in com, you can get the content of a word file instead of actually opening the entire word um, program each time to load in the content. So it should be a good bit faster than actually loading word completely. So, so, so if that, you're not going to make any changes, Jack, is that what you're saying? If you just need to read the file, you can use com object right. get and it's I did right. that. So but that, that's my question because for example, as, as I understand it, is that he says that he's using a com object, right? So now when he uses the com object, does word has to be open? I don't think so. No, so but he, he does create the, the word object. Uh-huh, yeah, I see it. And, the and then he loads word. the document and then he right, opens yeah. it. Right. And then he grabs the content. Right. But in your case, you just say like come object get and it just straight up like jumps all this directly to just getting the text. Yeah, I, I remember it doing it back in the day. Like hmm. uh, you'd say That's huge, man. That's awesome. Come object get file destination and then you would have yeah, the go, word. Go object. Up, go. Yeah. There, you passed it. You're down below flags, zero flags, right here. Yeah. Oh, I'll get get and then just the file path? Then, then yeah. And then you would actually get content, uh, text, like this? 
you know, most likely, yeah. It's it's a long time but, since I used it, but yeah. But wouldn't that also automatically open a new word process? No, it shouldn't. I think actually it's kind of funny because it's it's what Isaiah was saying earlier. It's 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 not opening word. It's leveraging the DLL or the comma object or both. It's right of directly to drive yeah, directly open it. Right. No. Might be. I have never actually uh, worked with those yet, so I have not worked with an object yet. Try, try and test it. And I, I do it... usually connect to them or create them, but I have never used the active or get one. Okay, I'll delete some files mm. and rerun it. No, but this is different. Oh. And yeah, damn it, it worked. <laughs> That's that's amazing, Jackie. That's awesome. And well, and what what about the speeds? It's actually very it fast. It would be it would be it would be faster, of course, by by because you don't. First of all, you're not opening a new instance on each read. But this is the interesting thing. Hold on. Mm. This is interesting because I'm, I'm just checking on the on the. Um, how do I say it is uh, on the help file. And hmm. from the information, I wouldn't have guessed that you could do that. <laughs> so basically oh. I wouldn't have guessed what you just did, that I could pass a file to it and, and that it automatically reads which come object it's gonna be. Like, I didn't know that. Uh, I, I don't remember where I got it from, but someone on the forum has posted it at some point and I've just Whoa, used it. that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting, for real. Because but it just says, like, returns a reference to an object provided by a com, com component. That's yeah. all it says, like, that's all. I'd say the, the method that Dimitri already used, where he was passing the same word object from, from each time he was using the function, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not 100% sure that uh, the com object get is faster in his case because he was mm -hmm. key, he kept using the same word right. process to just open a new document, but it's mm -hmm. um, to be sure you'd you'd need to to do a benchmark or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. I get it. Yeah. But okay. in general, I, 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 I do know that it gets reads of a lot of reads that he was doing before, but yeah. Yeah, in my case, if you're talking about 20 documents, it's, yeah, not really. But yeah, I think really with, this, with this code, you will probably also not get a pop-up. Uh, it will not open the document, what's not really necessary. So that's also nice. Well, and Jackie, for me, it, it just, Dimitri's example is one case, but just knowing now that that's a thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, that's, that's actually yeah. good. That's I can huge. try it in other situations, right? Where oh, yeah, that's that's huge. That's, I, I've the never fact that I don't have to know what the com object is. I just pass a file to it, and it maybe figures it out for me. That's great. Yeah, but it, it isn't using words then when using that this code or is he? No, I'm not sure what you mean. Is the process of Word, is it used or not? Oh, I'm not sure. It shouldn't you load the actual Word process. It uses the COM uh, object module to actually do this without loading the entire Word process. Oh, that's you, nice. You'd still load the actual document because that's what you have referenced there with the COM object get. Okay, uh, and actually, uh, this was a code to go to jump to the line. But yeah, you you can't get around actually opening right. the word process for doing that. Yeah, in that case, you you need word. And, and word. If you're doing that, you might as well use the full thing, right? But yeah. anyway, yeah, that's, that's very cool, Jackie. Yeah. Wow, but awesome. actually, do you guys have some similar? uh programs because uh i was think, <laughs> thinking a lot of how how i should uh, visualize it for me it's not really an issue more uh, uh actually i'm at the point that um 
I need time to program something and I need to know what my, how, how uh, actually coding is one thing, but how mm -hmm. to make it. Yeah, it's figuring nice. out yeah, so, the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and what do you actually need as an output is yeah. I find very important. The same with how you interact with the user. Do you use uh, menus or hotkeys or yeah? Those I are, find those that are very things, important. Yeah. It is very good. Actually, those things are what define whether a program is going to be good. It doesn't matter what the program actually does, you can do it very good. But if the user finds that it's difficult to work with it, like they, they might not like it. And you were saying about something that we had similar. Yeah, what I have is a little bit similar, in, but in a stretched sense. But, but this is a great audience to show it to anyway, as a yeah, okay, yeah. show it because it's it's something right. we were working. So we work, by the way, FYI, we have a, a, a free auto hotkey Udemy course coming out. It's on like FAQs about auto hotkey and things kind of wish you knew before you get started with it and some good intro stuff, right? right. Um, and one of the things on my bucket list was like, a question that always comes up, is auto hotkey safe, right? Okay. And we're like, well, the executable's safe, but you know, depending what script you get, right? It, who knows? So yeah, we started so, working on the script. Right, and this little script is, uh, I just do basically two things. Either uh, we create an outline of the script and all of those two versions of what I'm doing, they are actually already out there. There are some people who have done something similar to this. I just kind of like condense it into something a little bit more small. So I have two functions. One of them is just creating an outline of the script and the other one is going ahead and checking some particular keywords. So if we go ahead and run it, I just got a, a small GUI that we're going to be opening it up. And I could select any auto hotkey script. The beauty of it is that it's going to try to grab the include files as well. So if a file like this one, my auto hotkey toolkit, it has 4,000 lines and it has done several other include files. And I just want to know, is that thing safe for me to run in my computer? Well, what we created is kind of like a little scanner Kind of like <laughs> uh, something like the beginning of a, an antivirus. <laughs> We're just joking about that, like the beginning of an antivirus. So on the left side, we have kind of like the outline of the program, which tells you more or less which uh, files it includes, which functions it defines, and so on, which might be a good reference of some things that might be going on, right? And uh, the same as with the labels and stuff like that, right? Um, on the right side, I do, we do, this is kind of like completely subjective and we're gonna maybe later on kind of like moder, modulate it a little bit better, but we're taking a look at several keywords that we might consider uh, kind of like not dangerous, but you should take a look at that. So if a script, whatever you're gonna run uh, is executing code, and this is supposedly the a BVS script, uh, you might want to take a look at that. Why is a, an auto hotkey script trying to run visual basic code? So I would like to see what is going on. Now, even though it, it detected the keyword, it might not be that the script is doing that. So I give you a little bit of context. And the context here, as I can see, is actually setting some variables. And it seems to me that one of the variables has the word VVS script in it. So I don't care about that. Now, if the script is writing to a registry, like modifying the Windows registry, you might also want to take a look at that. Now, what it does is that it tells you which file here. So the, the one that we opened was the auto hard toolkit. But as I mentioned, it actually includes other files. One of those files that it included is modifying the, the Windows registry. So I would like to take a look at that. So what I could do, just go ahead and open, and I know that that one is in a library file that I just not happen to be that is the script object here. And it says line 329. So I can just go ahead and open, uh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and open that here. Let's just jump to line 329. Now what I see in this script is that I have 
this function that is called auto start that is writing to my run uh, key on my uh, Windows registry. Maybe I don't want to do that. I don't want that. So I don't want to run a script that does that. But I'm seeing that that function is kind of like conditional. It has some options and so on. I could just go ahead and delete that code before I run it. I could just comment out that code if I want. So this little script, what it does, it, it grabs, um, so let me go ahead and reopen that again. So it opens up my, um, it kind of like scans the file. And if you have a script of 4,000 lines, it drops it down to 294 that are or of interest. As of now, I don't see anything wrong with it. In my case, I would run it. I would check all the things like this thing. There are some of them that are modifying the memory. That means that it's using numput and, and that might be a security issue for some people. That's why we label it as high severity. If, if there is a risk, that might be something that is risky because they could modify your memory to try to execute code in your computer, right? So those kind of things. Um, again, if it is executing code, I see that I'm using the wrong command in some cases, but I take a look at what is being run. So look at that, the update.bad and so on. So I have a quick way to figure out whether the script is doing something weird or not. Um, and I categorize it by severity. Again, there are two things. This is completely objective, uh, subjective, I'm sorry. So for me, a DLL call might not be as bad. I label as a five. For you, is something that might be like something that you do not want to run ever. If somebody wrote code that has a DLL call and so on. But uh, again, those are potential risks. They are not that there are some things that are bad with the script. It's just things that, just in case you would want to just take a look at it. Um, and this little script, it does exactly what uh, you were doing, Dimitri. It goes ahead and opens files, right? And after it opens the file, it goes ahead and uh, reads it line by line and decides what, what to do with each of them. So more or less, in my case, as the type of of uh, regular expressions that I'm using are very short. I don't have to use the study command. And basically most of the regular expressions are if else statements. So basically only one of those gets executed. That's the reason why I don't usually study the regular expressions. But in your case, I saw that the regular expression was very long and it is something that you're doing for each line. So that would save some time for you as well, right? But um, I think this little script for people who are not very well versed on auto hotkey and, and they are afraid that somebody's gonna execute a virus or something. Well, I could give you a tool that might give you some insight, not 100%, you know, like um, uh, perfect, but it can point you in the, in the right direction as to not only what lines to look for, but also more or less what the potential risk is. My next step is gonna be like um, allowing them to uh, see the file as you had it. Like you see that your script actually goes to the file and goes to the line that you're referencing. So I would have something like that in here in which you probably double click on a line and it's gonna take you to the file in question. And it's just gonna drop you down to that particular um, um, uh, line so that you don't have to crawl or look for it. So those are the ideas uh, that we're working on. And I, I think that some people might benefit for it, from it, right? Are you yes, also I mean, scanning for the function uh, block input? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so if you want to watch, so we have some keywords. Um, so let's go ahead and those are the things that I do watch for. And that's the other thing. So this file, is a file is um is actually a um how do I say this is oh no it is a file that could be opened in uh, Excel by the way because it's a tap the limited file um, and that means that you could uh, easily add words that you deem 
you could modify this file very easily. So I just dropped it there. And we have the keyword, what type of keyword it is. Um, and by the way, of course, block input, uh, whether your file appending, if you're registered reading, if you're adding ActiveX stuff. Now, the severity, this is again, completely subjective, right? Some things for you might be more important than for me. And the purpose is more or less what it does. So they, when HTTP request is sending data over the internet. The reason why I have it so high is because I don't want them to grab information from your computer and send it to another location. So if I see a script that is not supposed to be doing connections to the internet, I would be highly suspicious, right? Like it is a script to fix your, you know, desktop. And then when you go ahead and scan it, it says like, no, it sends information over the internet. That, like you're like, okay, hold on, what is going on, right? That's those are the type of things that I, I would use before running code that is not mined, especially code that is very big that I don't want to read completely. At right. least I have some, yeah. yeah. At least I have some key things that are important to me, and I don't have to. You check the whole script for um, potential things that I don't like. Yeah, I, I think that was, there's two, for me, two main things is one, even for all of us, for really large scripts that we don't want to have to go through line by line. And two, if you're new to auto hotkey, here's a tool. And maybe what we could do, Isaiah, is we could have a button that says, which level are you? Are you completely new? Are you kind of mediocre and are you advanced? Okay. And that would change the weighting depending on that, right? Well, um, and yeah, and, and the, the, the amount of information being shown maybe, right? right? Because right. there's a lot of things in here that are kind of like, uh, yeah, for me, it's okay, but that's a lot of text. Right. Maybe you just want to know what is and yeah. the potential risk. Thankfully, most to. scripts that people get, they're 100 lines or less, right? So right. It, it'll, it, it wouldn't always be this thing, but yeah, it's, it's the beginnings of... In so, my instance, the one thing, uh, and I mentioned this to you, Joe, was that I can't even find when I do very bad coding. Like, for example, you're noticing here that there are right. three times that I use the same single instance. Right. And that is because of something that I was using, uh, kind of like live coding that I was doing. And for each of those scripts, I was adding the single instance for it. That's not kind of like bad coding. And I would see it right away. <laughs> if I have very big uh, files, I would just go ahead and run them with this thing. Um, knowing that it's going to pull up all the includes as well. That's good. So I don't have to worry about, okay, the, the main script looks good, but what about the includes? Well, no, it goes ahead and pulls up all the includes as well and checks on them as well. So, yeah. Okay, then. So that's the last part that I was going to show from here. I don't know if you want me to show anything else or if no, we're good to go. Do you else have anything you want to share or questions or anything? <laughs> cool. uh, I was just uh, looking here on the forum and actually found another method of uh, getting the content of a word file hmm. just because. Uh, I know it's a, it's a stretch, but apparently someone here is renaming the file into a zip folder and then using the shell application and the namespace to copy the content of it into a Word file. Want to share your screen, Jackie? Yeah, yeah, sure. Or you can just describe it to us. Yeah, I was, right? It was working just fine. But yeah, I don't have any type of uh, example code per se. I just have this one form thing that we share. So this was the thing, reads MS Word fast. Um, and apparently he's showing it here. Here he's grabbing all of the, the needed information from the testing doc that he has. That is a file of 100,000 lines with 10 alphanumeric random characters like so. And all of the lines are unique, no duplicate. So it's a massive file he's right, testing it, it on. Yeah. Uh, and if he used a more normal COM way of doing it, it took four, 3.4 seconds to do it. And in his testing here with his new method, uh, it only took 0 
34. So yeah. it sounds very fast. I haven't tested it. But what he does when you go over all of this and don't really, there's not, not much to use it for. It's just setting a temp folder or temp name, copying the file and changing its name um, and then creating a folder for it. Then he uses the shell application object here and uses the information he made up here to actually make a copy of the content of the word file. Then he deletes the, the temp version. He sets the file encoding to UDF uh, 8 and he reads what he now made. And while he's looking for specific words and stuff like that, because it makes it into XML. Um, and then in the end, he uh, read or he writes it to a file. Um, so, no, so, so I, I do want to mention something here. The, the, the interesting thing, what, what he's doing, he's not reading uh, an, a word file per se. He's actually converting that document into a zip file and he's actually reading the binary file on it. It's something very tricky what he's doing. It's very interesting. Well, I know when I when I was doing this in Excel a while ago that like Excel back when it switched to the XLSX actually stores its data in XML files. And, and I think that's what it, they're, mm -hmm. I guess the word ones are too. And you can yeah. unpack that stuff. And then that was where so you can read, even if you, the great thing about this is even if you don't have Word, Word right, exactly, you don't. run this, right? That's freaking brilliant. So yeah. if you go up a little bit, so if you go up a little bit, um, so where he's doing the temp folder and temp name, he's actually replacing in the document, so a little bit, uh, the line before that one, he's replacing the .x extension to .zip. So he's actually- he's unzipping it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, he's not unzipping it. He's actually just replacing that. Well, the line about he's, he's just telling Windows that this is actually not a, a, a word. A dog for it. Yeah, exactly. It's a zip right file. There, but... Right. It's just to make it easier to work with. Right, so that exactly. you can actually is... do this. Uh, um... this, is, this voodoo. <laughs> yeah, the thing is that the, the shell explorer, the shell application there, um, is used to read zip files, right? Um, that's what I use for our update function here, is that I actually use the shell application to only zip, zip files. And what he's doing is just converting the document, the doc, the document file into a zip file and telling the shell application, go ahead and read that zip file, which is kind of interesting. So there is information zipped inside a document 10 object, which is, uh, for me, that's, you know, I didn't know that. And with the, that thing that he took out to is an XML, right? Would this also work in the Excel documents? Uh, he hasn't put up an example here, but it might is my best <laughs> guess in this case. Right. Because you it can be, probably yeah. convert the Excel file into an XML format in the same uh, manner as this is done. And uh, he is then using a loop here to actually extract all of the content of the XML file. But you could most likely do quite a lot of um, advanced stuff with the XML file right, as it of course, is. Yeah. So you can most likely convert an Excel file to XML as well. But again, I haven't tested it, so I can't say for sure. Yeah, that was good. That was actually very good. So yeah, that was another method of actually doing that. He he uh, structures it a little different down here, but it's it's the same. Uh, yeah. Jesus is telling in the chat that he also wants to display. Uh, yeah, a sure. Script or... Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay, hi, Isaias. Hi. Um, I I have been watching some YouTube uh, YouTube videos and I seen your tool uh, the hotkey toolkit. It yes. is uh, ten years old. It okay. is. 
I seen it last week. <laughs> <laughs> I like it uh, very much because just for testing quick things without yeah. saving the file, it is it is good. In a way, I, I would like to ask you something about this, about this tool, because uh, uh, of course, when I write the first line, I, I need to run it, click on the run button. Mm -hmm. And if I edit it, uh, I need to run again the, Mm -hmm. I mean, click again the run button, but then it yeah. creates a second yes. uh, icon in the in the taskbar. In the yeah, is there any way to? Yes, let avoid me. Let it? me. Well, not avoid it. The, the The reason why you cannot really avoid it is because of the way how I'm how I create it. But I, I there's two ways that you can work around it. So um, what I usually do is. Um, the, the, the scripts by themselves, so this is something that is not documented. The script by themselves, they, uh, whenever you run a script uh, in here, they create certain kind of like uh, safety measures. So that if you create something like an infinite loop, like this. So this is an infinite loop. And usually if you, if you block your whole uh, computer and stuff, how do you stop this? And sometimes, well, sure at that you're time, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I'm, uh, and I'm missing out. <laughs> yeah, you're missing out on something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, give me a second. Uh, that was because good. when I watched the video, I thought that you were somehow yeah. dating. Yeah. No, the problem is there's a few things that are hidden. You cannot see them there. But there's a, a hotkey that gets created automatically, which is control escape. And that is an exit app. So if your scripts don't have an exit app in there, automatically, when you run them, it is running. If you press Control Escape, it is going to exit the script anyways. Mm -hmm. So basically, when I'm testing a lot of things, I just open, especially when I'm testing like GUIs. Um, right. So if I'm edit, editing GUIs, um, and I'm doing something like this. I run it, I don't like it. And that's the other thing. If you have a GUI and you do not have a GUI close um, option in there, as soon as you close it, it exits the application as well. So I have two ways for making that the application close. The reason why it is not gonna like, uh, it's not gonna work if you use, for example, single instance force, because each script it, um, gets, let me go ahead and have, uh, longer so each script has a random name here as you can see here at the top so this random name is gonna not allow it for the single instance for it to work because um each script is gonna have its own name so it's not gonna be able to find it right so that's the reason why but the way about regarding that is control escape. So whenever I'm testing um, a lot of GUIs, I make some changes. I have like, uh, you know, a thousand, whatever, I don't care. So I just tested a few of them. I have a lot of them down there. I just press control escape until they're done. So soon, well, not soon. I haven't updated this code in a long time, but um, <laughs> I, I was thinking the, the, the thing that I was going to say is that soon I will be rewriting this in an Ottawa key version two. So I'm trying to rewrite it because I also want to learn how to have key version too. So kind of like, I'm going to give it some love. And one of the things that I want to do is just close all open scripts because uh, at that time when our hard key started, you couldn't get the PID of the script very easily. So now the, 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 um, the ID of the script itself Right now it's easy because now you get the PID uh, very easily in a lot of variables and very simple stuff, right? But um, a long time ago, it was not like that. But now I could keep track of all the PIDs that I have opened and then have a button that closes all of them. So I will add that at some point, probably with a clear command. I just clear and it would just close them all. Maybe so not. let me ask a couple of things here real quickly here. One, well, one comment on, Isaiah, you know our lesson we need to create for that course with the great um, tips to have on, you know, uh, commands to have in our files. 
Like yeah. that, that's one I have in my include. That's it's always there. My exit, you know, my hotkey, it's it's in there by default. Oh, it's, tiny button, right. it's always the it's just great. Um now the other one, just because you brought it up, was I'm curious out of people here and anyone watching the video, how many of you guys are are at least playing with or are already using auto hockey version two? Yeah. Is anyone actually developing with it? Are you trying it? Are you did you switch? I'm just curious if, if anyone's actually switched. I we thought the were, April Fool's Day joke was interesting. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking prior about. Prior to that, I never really even gave the, it much thought. What was the joke? He w Lexicus made some JavaScript mappings to auto hotkey commands. And so you could kind of run a javascript auto hotkey hybrid thing but it was mostly i guess it was mostly a joke but it does work so oh, okay <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> it's kind of a half joke like we're switching to javascript and it did work <laughs> so it's like yeah it works it but it's not like the few i don't even know how much it's like 50 percent joke 50 percent real so it's kind of hard to understand right no, so after that, you haven't actually really tested it and so on, right? Um, well, I thought the concept was good, but prior to that, version two didn't fix enough problems for me to really take seriously. No, yeah. So I, I, uh, um, I understand that point, and actually that's the reason why I haven't actually quit, because Arahaki works well most of the time, right? So uh -huh. the new tool has to be better. If it is the same, like, yeah, there's no point in switching. Well, that's why, well, yeah, that's why the JavaScript got me interested because that gives you another ecosystem that gives you the speed and, you know, some other annoying things. I don't know about, probably most people here like the one indexing, but I personally would prefer a zero oh. index after yeah. you know, getting the training wheels off, it's kind of nice to go back I, to the zero. I, I but, really uh, love the zero index. <laughs> but, uh, that, that, was, that would be a feature if, if that was a real direction, which I guess it's not. Oh, man. Yeah, so, well, to each its own, right? I actually, uh, I've rewritten my code a little bit because I saw that some of the functions will not be used anymore in version two. So I already prepared my code a little bit to, to uh, yeah, suppress some, some commands uh, yeah. that are, are, are uh, replaced by other commands. And I uh, on the forum, you also find uh, some libraries of uh, new functions that are actually will be used in version two. So that's also a possibility to use in your code to prepare the, the transition. Right. But I'm still um, writing in version one now. I feel that the transition is kind of like really slow. And I think most of the people, what they're going to do and the best they could do is just prepare their current code to not do some things. That's it. Preparing for the version two. Because at the end, in the end, I think at some point, it's going to be released and it's going to be like the main branch anyways. So it's better to get to know it now, not later. Um, there are some things that I found uh, interesting like this. So whenever you're creating GUIs, now you're using kind of like object notation. Um, and even though it's kind of like a little bit uh, quirky at the beginning, when you look at it, it looks weird. But it allows you to do very interesting stuff that you couldn't do in uh, um, in Auto Hockey version one. So, whenever you have, um, for example, in version one, you could uh, have a we add button, and you had this label like a label like that, and that if that label was uh, so you show um, um, label. So if you have this, um, uh, sorry, if you have this as a function though, like this, you couldn't in AutoHotKey 
in an easy manner. This function, when it gets called, you cannot bind parameters to it, which is something that uh, sometimes you just want to call the same function from different buttons with different parameters set to them. Okay, so that's the that's kind of like a like a, a a good thing that you might want to do. So one function that does more or less the same old things, but with different parameters. Well, and for each, yeah, go ahead. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, if you can't pass parameters, you're basically having a ghost up, right? I mean, it's it's defeating the main well, purpose of a, not the main purpose, but but but, but, but again, no, no, but 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 again, remember that this G label started as a label. It was a label, not a function. So they, they added the functions, but right. then, yeah, you cannot pass functions to it and you cannot pass labels. Uh, so what they did is that they kind of like fix it. So now you have to, for, for a button, now you don't add G labels. What you do is that you add an on event. So that looks like a JavaScript thing with on, the, on the click event, which makes a little bit of sense. But now you can pass the function like this and bind parameters to it, wow. which is good. So now when the function is called, there's a few things that get passed to it automatically. Mm. And I like that. For example, I wanted to pass the, the, the search that I did and the window, the main window that I created. So I wanted to pass those things to it whenever I call it, and that's good. So. On another button, probably I might call the same function, but with different parameters. I could do that, you see? So those are kind of the little things that it solves and so on. But it looks quirky. You know, maybe, maybe we can plan, a uh, maybe the next webinar, if we don't have another topic, to be on version two and just discussing some of the, the changes, you know. Um, well, if somebody has played right. more than me, that would be great because I haven't really played with it. I have started like two scripts. Um, I like it for now. I like a few things of it, but but there's some other things that caught me off guard. Like for example, if you have, so you might think. Well, we're running out of time here. That's what, I didn't want to do too okay. much. Okay, I'm sorry. So that's the last thing that I was going to say. So you might think that that's something that might work in our hockey version too, but it doesn't. And that's something that is, it throws you off. So switching to auto hockey too, is kind of like a little bit complicated at the moment. Cool, well, thank you all for being here. Um, yeah. Jack, do you have anything else? But... No, I don't. Thanks again, Isaiah, for leading that, that notepad plus plus. It's, I can <laughs> see it's, it's a solid editor. It's got a lot of functionality. It's just, it's a bit dated and, um yeah it's hey it's it's, it's, still, out there, right? it's, it's right, still out there right it's still out there so yeah cool well thank you all thanks for being here yeah absolutely bye. we'll see bye. you soon bye